Hi, I'm Rashonda. I'm the creator of this YouTube channel as well as the artbyrow.com website where you can find over 200 art and drawing tutorials. So don't forget to check that out after you watch the video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I draw my graffiti letters and I'm going to do a graffiti letter K today. I'll be using artist trading cards, but of course you can use whatever size and type of paper you want. Let's go ahead and go on over to the art studio and get started on that. All right, today I'm going to be drawing a graffiti letter K. I'm doing mine on an artist trading cards. I really love doing graffiti letters on artist trading cards. It's a great way to practice your lettering techniques and just kind of developing your style, playing around with some colors, backgrounds, just they're a lot quicker. You can put them in a portfolio. If you're not sure what artist trading cards are, check out the description box and there's some information in there for you. So like with any of my drawings, I prefer to start with some basic guidelines and we can do that same thing with our lettering. I'm going to move that over a little bit. That's going to be a little too far that way. So what I want to do is get the basic flow of my letter going. So like I said, this is a graffiti K. And there are so many different ways you can draw your graffiti lettering, different styles. But I want to get just kind of a basic idea of the positioning of the letter how it's going to flow, what areas I want to curve, which ones I want to be a little bigger. And we'll kind of clean this up as we go. But this is going to act as my guideline for my letter. Then I can go in and kind of flush it out a little bit, figure out where I want everything to go, and then just using those guidelines is a path of where I'm going with my letters. So a lot of times I want to make them narrower at one end and then wider at the other. So I want to do that here. Down here I might bring this up this way a little bit more. Like with anything that you're making for your art, it's just a series of decisions that you want to make and how you want things to look. And you can change that. You don't have to necessarily do this exactly the way that I am. You could follow this tutorial and change it up a little bit and come up with something completely different. And that's, to me, that's what makes art really fun is all the variation that you can have with it. So a lot of this is going to be erased. And I'll typically do that at the end after I do the outline. But I'll show you here so you can follow where my thought process is going. I'm going to have that stick out there. And this is going to come up here going to be a little bit wider there and then the bottom part I want to come out a little bit bigger and you might have to play around with it a little bit to get the get it to flow the way you want it to Like I said, there's just a series of decisions that you need to make. And your decisions might be a little bit different than mine, and that's a good thing. I don't make these videos so that you can copy exactly what I'm doing. I make these videos in hopes of inspiring you to come up with your own ideas to try it, do something a little bit different, change it up a little bit. So I think that's okay. I could play around with this a little bit more if I wanted to. 
And that's another thing with art. At some point, you have to decide when, when to be done with it and when to keep working on it. That's another thing that I like about the artist trading cards is that you can do these so quickly or so much more quickly than full-size artwork that if you want to play around with it and do multiple drawings, you can, and you're not spending hours and hours on your drawings. For I think most people don't have a ton of extra time to work on their artwork. Maybe you do, and that's good if you do. But for many of us, we have jobs that we have to go to every day and family to take care of, houses, responsibilities, all that kind of stuff. So for me, the artist trading cards work out really well. And I'll often do a series of drawings where I'll do seven of them in a week. I'll do one each day. I'll make a commitment to myself to do one each day. And then for each one, I like to try something different. And just experiment, push my creativity, try different things. Something for like the graffiti letters. It's a good opportunity to play around with different colors. Different ways of coloring the letters themselves. So there's a lot of different ways to do the coloring. Not just a solid color. You could do fade the different colors into each other or add some kind of patterns to it. There's so many different things you can do, but doing those series is a good way to experiment, play around a little bit, try different things with the backgrounds. So all I'm doing is adding a little bit thicker background to this. And you can do this with a marker if you want. I prefer using the pen and going over it until I get the thickness that I want. It leaves a crisper edge than what a marker does. But it's up to you. Whatever your preference is, you could try doing a color besides black, which I don't think I've ever outlined my graffiti letters in a different color, but that would be something I could try sometime. And I could try it, and maybe I don't like it. I do prefer the black outlines on most of my stuff. But that doesn't mean that it would be a bad idea to try doing something different. Because you never know. That's, that's how you come up with new techniques and ways of doing things. And you can make your outline as thin or as thin or as thick as you want to. It's a personal preference that's going to depend on your own artistic style and the look that you're going for. And then what I'll do is use a block eraser and clean up all of this, get rid of all the pencil lines. Which is why I typically won't erase as I go, because it's easier to, to do it with this. Get that all cleaned up. So now, I need to decide what I want to do for the background, and what colors I'm going to use for my letter itself. So I'm going to grab some markers, and I'll be back when I have that done.
Okay, so now I have my colors picked out. I'm going to do blue for the letters, or for the letter. I want to start with my lightest color at the top, and I'm going to fade it into a darker blue. So typically what I'll do is fill in a little bit more than the area that's going to be this lighter blue. And then I'll overlap it with the next color. And what I do to choose my colors is I have, show you, I have these little scrap papers that are left over from when I cut out my artist trading cards. And I'll use those to test the colors out. So now I'm going to do my next color. Which this one's about to run out. That's the bad thing about markers. When you're using them, when they run out, you have to have more of the same exact color or you have to use something different in its place that will kind of blend in and cover it up a little bit that can be difficult sometimes and you can mix and match marker brands as long as they're all alcohol based markers they will blend together But trying to, you probably are going to have a difficult time, if it's even possible, I don't know that it's even possible, to try to match a specific color with a different brand. I don't know that that would even be possible, but as you can see, I'm using different brands of marker. This one happens to be a Bic marker. The bad thing about these, like this one, I really like this color of blue. And I haven't been able to find a replacement for it in another brand. Something that would be similar. And the only way I found to get this marker is to buy a set of, I think it's like 24 that it comes in to get this color. And I don't need the other 23 markers I just want this one so I've kind of steered away from these big markers because I don't like that you can't buy individual colors so the next thing I want to do is I've decided for the background I want to do kind of a stylized brick wall so I think what I'll do is go ahead and draw the brick wall in here and I like using these cardboard straight edges and just making them the width that I want my bricks to be. And then I can just line them up and everything's fairly even and straight. Okay, and then where my bricks are going to go So I'm not going to make a full brick wall. Like I said, I want to make it kind of stylized looking. That one would go there. Maybe put a line here. There'd be one here. So just give me a rough idea of where the bricks are. And then I'm going to take my black marker. This is just a regular marker. And I'm just going to do some little indications of where the bricks would go. And then the rest of this I'm going to erase. So I'm just picking some different areas, varying the lines a little bit.
And sometimes when I'm making these decisions, I have no idea how they're going to turn out. I don't know what this is going to look like when it's done. But it was just an idea, something to try. If it doesn't work out the way I want it, I'm not going to be too upset about it. It's fun to try different things and see how it looks. So I don't know if you can see this <clears throat> on camera, excuse me. But the black marker tends to bleed a little bit so you get a fuzzy edge, which is what I want for these bricks. But when I'm doing my outline of my lettering, I don't want a fuzzy edge and that's why I use this. It's a Sharpie pen that I use. So now the background, I have my markers picked out for that. And I'm going to do a fade of some yellows, oranges, and pinks. And we'll see what that looks like. So I usually like to start with my lightest colors first. It doesn't really matter, you can do it either way. You can start with the lightest, you can start with the darkest colors. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to do similar to what I did with the letter, only with a different set of colors. And I'm kind of hoping I didn't let this black dry intentionally. I'm hoping that it'll still be wet enough that when I put this color over top of it, it might pull out some of that black and make it a little more fuzzy. Normally, what you might want to do is let that black dry all the way before going over top of it with another color. But I actually want the color to interact with that black a little bit and soften it up. So we'll see what happens. If it doesn't, that's okay too. So I'm overlapping a little bit. And then while this marker is still wet, I'm going to go back over where they meet with this lighter yellow. And blend that in a little bit. And then I'm going to go with this pink color. So sometimes your colors aren't going to blend together real well if there's too much of a difference. And then another thing, so this pink marker is also drying out. If you're using the smaller tip and your marker's drying out, you can oftentimes flip it over and use the bigger tip and get a little bit more life out of it. So these two colors are only going to blend so much because they're a little bit different, but I'm okay with that. I wanted to have, I wanted this to transition into these pinks. I'm doing the same thing with these two colors. And then while it's still wet, I need to go back over it with this one. Another thing is that if your marker is starting to run out, if it's drier, it's going to be a little bit harder to get those colors to blend together because you need that moisture from the alcohol. 
so that they can blend together. So we'll go back over this and try to soften that up a little bit. So for this background, I really wanted to use this pinkish purple color. And I don't have a good pink that is the next level to that one. So we're just going to have to go over this a little bit. Fade that in together. And then as you can see, as I went back over it with this marker, it made it darker. So I'm going to have to go back over it with this one again. And as you can see, as that marker got, or as the paper got a little saturated up here, it made this black even more fuzzy than what it was before. And that's good, because that's kind of what I was going for. And then to finish it up, you can use a white Jelly Roll pen, and you can go over top of... this other marker down here and add some white highlights however you want to do that or you can leave that off this points optional you could do this step or not and if you notice that it looks like the the white is soaking into the paper. That's would be caused by the alcohol still being wet. So you just need to let it sit and dry a little bit and then go back over it again and it'll cover. I think that's it. I'm gonna call this one done. That's my graffiti letter K. One way of doing one. Lots of different options you could try, different things. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Happy creating! That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully you feel inspired to do some of your own graffiti letters. If you did like the video, please hit that like button, and make sure you subscribe to get notified of future videos. Also, before you leave, check out that description box. There's some freebies in there for you, and I will see you next time. Bye!